Greetings, River Lady here with the second of what I'm hoping are three videos from my Hydrangea University visit. And this video is going to cover moisture meter and mulching. So the first thing I want to talk about is a, a moisture meter. The speakers suggested that we all should own a moisture meter. Typically I used to check the moisture of my soil by digging down and squeezing the soil and seeing if it sticks together, but that got to be a lot of work. So I purchased this, and this is not a paid endorsement, but I purchased this one, which is a three-in-one soil tester. and. It's actually more than just a moisture meter. Well, here I can show you here. It tests light, pH, and moisture. It's very easy to use. You just slide the little slidey thing over to what you want and then stick it down deep into the ground. You want to make sure that when you're done using the meter, you're done testing an area, that you wipe it with a soft cloth. And I just use an old t-shirt. Okay, so you can see that I have it on moist. So let's go in and test this soil and see if it does have moisture. Here I am with my little blue Danube and look at how sweet that little flower is. He's struggling this year because it's been a tough year overall. Now when you are looking at your soil, you can see here that the soil looks dry on the surface but that can be misleading. Sometimes the soil still has enough moisture deep down and that, by measuring that, that'll help you prevent overwatering of your hydrangeas. So we're just going to take the soil meter and press it down into the ground. There it goes. And then we're going to come in tight and see what we have. Now since I'm bent over, I can't really see what it's registering, but I do think it's registering that the soil is moist. All right, good. It's important to measure your soil moisture before you water your plants because hydrangeas and a lot of other plants are susceptible to overwatering and that can kill them. I suggest you get yourself a moisture meter. That was one of the things that the one of the speakers at the university mentioned to have in your little arsenal of garden tools. And the next thing we're going to talk about is mulching. One of the things the gentleman at the Hydrangea University recommended is to keep a thick layer of mulch around your hydrangeas. A lot of people, he was saying, just spread about an inch thickness of mulch. And I am guilty of using a thin layer of mulch, trying to make it go as far as possible to keep the costs down. He recommended at least three inches of mulch around your plants, and that's what I am going to do. We are especially in need of retaining moisture during this growing season. And even though it's late, right now it's, we're in August, I don't think we're going to be getting rid of the hot, dry weather anytime soon. So I got mulch on sale, and I'm going to put down try to put down at least three inches around my plants. When you're spreading your mulch, you don't want to spread it right up to the crown. You want to keep some space and that will help to avoid any fungus growing in there. <laughs> I have to admit, this isn't great mulch. This is just tree bark um, and the pieces are big and thick, but that's okay. Beggars can't be choosers. And as I said, it was on sale. Okay, so I've put the mulch down around my little blue Danube, and I have about, go ahead and stick my finger in there, I have about three inches. I have about three inches of mulch, maybe two and a half inches, which is a nice thick layer. But as you can see, it didn't go very far. Oh gosh, I'm gonna need a lot more mulch. Okay, so that's it for me with this video. I have one more topic in the next video, and then that's it for my Hydrangea University notes. I thank you for watching, and I wish you happy gardening. Bye.